So going through that, a large L, if you have a large theta on the right-hand side, that means your sine theta has to be big on the left-hand side. But remember that for an acute angle, theta and sine of theta move together. We talked about that when we were working with optics. That's an important fact. Uh, theta and cosine of theta don't move together. That's why it's more convenient to work with sine when we're working with waves and optics here. For an acute angle, if you have a large sine of theta, that's because you have a large theta. A big angle means a big sine of theta. And we're only going to work with acute angles here. You can see from the picture all the angles will be acute. Um, and then a large theta means that we're going to be further away. violet spot and the red spot. And this is the red spot. And then all the other colors of the rainbow will be spread out between them. You're going to get a little rainbow here. We're going to get a little rainbow of bright spots going along Roy G. Biv from red to violet. see here that when you're close to the central line, you have a small theta, and when you're far from the central line, you have a big theta. So theta really does tell you the position of the spot. We can see that even more clearly if we're using the small angle approximation. If we're using the small angle approximation, a big theta gives you, which of these variables tells you the position here? Y. Yeah, that tells you even more directly, well, a big lambda, a big lambda here will give you a big Y. So that just reinforces what we saw before. So using either approach, we're going to see that big wavelengths have their bright spots further away. All right, and remember, these are just the first bright spots. Then if you go a little distance longer, you'll get the second set of bright spots, and that'll be another rainbow. And then you go further, uh, further from the, uh, you'll go further from the center, and you'll get another little rainbow. So here's a rainbow going from violet to red. And then here's the second order bright spots going from violet to red. And then here would be the third order bright spots going from violet to red. So you're gonna, um, what you're actually going to see when you shine white light through is a whole bunch of little rainbows. Okay. Um, so this is a, a way to get uh, what's called dispersion, when white light splits up. We already saw another way to get dispersion. Remember, we, we talked previously about how you can also shine white light through a prism. Because remember that different wavelengths get bent by different amounts when they go into different mediums. Different wavelengths have different indexes of refraction, so they spread out. That's also where we get the rainbow, um, because different wavelengths get bent by different amounts. This is pretty much uh, a totally different way to get a rainbow. So these are totally kind of unrelated ways, two unrelated ways to show that white light is really made out of many colors. Oh, so it's like the same thing with the question. There's a question on the homework about a diamond. That, like, when white light goes into the diamond. That's right, yeah. Okay, so uh, here again we get uh, a spectrum of different colors here. So this would only happen, this wouldn't happen if we used monochromatic light, right? If we just used red light, if we just used red light, then we would just get a bunch of red spots. Or if we just used violet light, we just get a bunch of violet spots. Or if we just use blue light, we just get a bunch of blue spots. But if you use white light, polychromatic light, that's a combination of the colors, well then the different colors will end up with different bright spots. I uh, remember the reason is, um, when do we get the first bright spot? The first bright spot happens when the path length difference is a whole wavelength. But obviously that turns out that's a different place for different wavelengths, right? The first bright spot is when one wave has gone one full wavelength longer than the other. Well, that can't happen at the same point for violet and for red because they have different wavelengths. That's the whole definition. So it all comes down to the idea that the bright spots are based on um, the path length difference being a whole number of wavelengths. 
Okay, so there's definitely one or two problems in the homework um, where they give you light uh, of more than one color and you have to compare the different bright spots. So you have to be very careful with your variables here. So notice they could be talking about two spots that have the same M. Yeah, because they could be from different colors. So if you're working with polychromatic light, just because they have uh, there's two spots doesn't mean they have different M's. They could be they could both be in the second order. They could both be the second order spots, but one could be the second order blue spot and the other could be the second order green spot. So how would you figure out exactly where the spots are? Well, if you want to know where the, uh, the red spot would be, you would look up the wavelength of red light around 400, and you would plug that into the equation and solve for theta. And if you want to know where the blue spot would be, you would look up the wavelength of blue light, which I don't have memorized, but whatever that is, you would plug that in, and that would give you the theta for the blue light. So again, different wavelengths will have different thetas. You got to keep careful track of the different thetas and the different wavelengths. Those are the points I wanted to make about uh, colors. Let's do another little problem solving trick. Suppose they tell you in words that the screen is five meters away from the slits. Um, which variable are they telling you? Not Y, but L. All right, so again, uh, in a lot of problems, the, the only obstacle is figuring out where to plug in the numbers. So we have to look at the common wording here. Suppose they tell you that you're looking at a first order spectrum. What number does that give you to plug into a formula? Yeah. And again, that's very something that people often just skim over. They don't even realize that this is important information. If they tell you to do the first order spectrum, you have to plug in m equals 1. 